everyone. You're watching We Heart Therapy, the special series EFT Talk. I'm your host, Dr. Annabelle Bugatti, licensed marriage and family therapist and certified EFT supervisor and therapist here in fabulous Las Vegas. We're welcoming back to our show, Dr. Ting Lu. She's an EFT trainer as well as a supervisor and therapist, and she's the founder of the Philadelphia Center for EFT, and she does uh, EFT for all of Asia, which is really exciting. And you've probably caught a few of our other videos that we've done together, but we brought her back because we're going to talk today about how to use EFT to help couples that want to break up with dignity. And it's very effective. So we're really excited to have Dr. Ting Lu back to our show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to share this topic with everyone because this is what uh, people ask me all the time that can EFT be used with a couple who are going through um, divorce or who are deciding uh, whether or not they should end or save the relationship, or even for couples who don't know what they want for the relationship. That's right. And I love you made a very important distinction there, which I really want to just make sure that we do explicitly address, guys, in that Dr. Ting said, that the couples decide, right? So remember our ethics around this issue is that it's not up to us to tell a couple, you should break up, I think you should break up, you don't do that. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. not, not in our ethical code. It's not for us to decide. That's right, that's right. But sometimes couples will actually come in. Not everyone comes in to save the relationship. Sometimes they mm -hmm. come in so that we can help them learn how to navigate going through a divorce, especially if there's children involved, or maybe they decide somewhere through therapy, I'm done with this. And so I love what you're saying is that if couples do decide, EFT can still be very effective in helping them get through this process. Yes, yes, definitely. I think that um, having a conversation is very important. So. I think when couple come in, the first decision we have to help them to make is what form of therapy that you can help them, right? So here's my two cents, right? If they come in and they have decide that they want to repair and reconcile and both of them want that, then I really think, of course, EFT couple therapy work a lot than individual, right? But there are times that um, they don't know yet or they are feeling very ambivalent one week they feel this way and the other they want to you know, go the other direction. And this is also the situation I think that having uh, then in couple therapy is very important because we don't just make decision on our own. You know, like I think everybody has this experience that you have a client come into therapy and then they told you, you know, I'm done with this person. I just cannot take this anymore. And I have made, made out my mind. And then they went home their partner was extremely nice to them. Or something happened, remind them of the good time that you, they used to have. And then they have a second thought, right? So I think to make decision about the relationship, whether or not you are, you know, having that in couple therapy actually work a lot better, right? Yeah. And then I think the other common situation that's tricky for the therapist to deal with is there's a disagreement. You know, you have one partner who want to save the relationship, whereas the other partner want to end it. So when you have two people disagree with each other, I think this is not a time for us to help them just to make the decision, but we had to start, you know, sort of finding or identifying some common goal that they both are interested in. Because if they don't have the same goal, what are you going to work on in couple therapy? Right, That's so right. this is a situation I will start with you know, looking at their disagreement or differences in their um, decision as the trigger that set up their inter the international cycle. Mm -hmm. You know, because the disagreement is that they, they have different opinion, like anything else that they disagree or they are different, right? So, so this is actually- You might almost use it like content, kind of treat it as content. That's right, that's right, that's a very good point. Yeah, so any disagreement will be a content, but this is a big disagreement that is very hard for us to overlook. But if you get stuck in this, try to talk about pros and cons, try to talk about, you know, 
that maybe we should give a try to take some time off or try to you know, repair this. I mean, either way, you lose one partner because you don't have the same goal in therapy with them. Right, that's right. So I love what you're saying. This can be a very um, emotional time for the couples and for the therapists. You know, it's that's right. you know, most of us are marriage and family therapists. And when couples come, it's kind of automatically in our programming to want to save the relationship. And so when you have one person who's like, no, I'm pretty sure I'm done. And the other person wants to save it. You know, that can feel like quite a dilemma. But some couples aren't always sure. I love what you said, how sometimes they're on the fence and then they go home and things are nice and they're like, well, maybe I could tough it out, you know, and I always tell couples that are considering it that, you know, there's not a gun to your head that says you have to pull the trigger right now on this marriage. You have the gift of time. And just like choosing to get into the marriage is a big decision. Deciding to leave is also a really big decision. So it everybody to be able to have that time and sort through and really help them, you know, maybe have some clarity as to how they even got to this point if they're not sure. Um, but, you know, I, I hear what you're saying that when they come in in this predicament where one person is saying, no, I don't want to leave and the other person saying yes, I think part of what gets us so stuck is because we already see the attachment dilemma right there is one person wants to stay attached and the other doesn't at least to the marriage and but, but you know what you're saying is really interesting because i also have partner who look really really cold it's like they are they are completely out right mm -hmm. but then as we sort of help them de-escalate the cycle and then they sort of feel safe enough to share how they really feel inside sometimes they feel the pressure to to act really cold and distant because they don't want to give the other partner the false hope. They, want, they don't want to send the wrong message to drag this process any longer, right? So, so sometimes that what we see and we may feel like, okay, there's no hope for this couple. They are really done with each other. But sometimes that's not accurate because they are just you know, getting stuck in the cycle and they are behaving in a way that made them feel safer. Right. right. But which may not be how they truly feel, or we may learn a different side of them and how they really feel about the relationship and their future um, only when the cycle has been de escalated slightly or gradually. Yeah. I love what you're saying. Sometimes, you know, partners have gotten to that place where it, it sounds like they're done, but they're really kind of secretly making an ultimatum that says, this is the only way I know how to get you to take me seriously, that I'm in this much pain and things have to change. And so it's like, if things don't change, I am done, I am done. And I need you to hear that it's to that breaking point. And, you know, oftentimes, sort of the way that I will kind of assess for that, where they are is to ask them if things were different in the relationship, if things were more the way that you wanted, would, that, would you wanna stay in that situation? And a lot of times they will say, yeah, I think I would. I just have literally zero hope that that will happen. And sometimes, you know, people will say, you know, I'm really not sure if that would be enough. I think I'm just so done, you know, and, and that's hard. That's really hard for us as therapists. I know. And then it's also hard to uh, not go into problem solving or sort of pushing them to make decision because it's also hard for us to deal with the ambivalence and not knowing. I think one feeling therapists do not like to have is the anxiety because we don't know where we are heading towards. We don't know where that they are and climb maybe on the limbo, you know, change back and forth. I think one thing uh, is really important as EFT therapists is really to be able to stay there, to stay with the ambivalence, stay with the unknown, and also have the empathy that this is a very difficult situation for them. And you know, the best way to help them is really to support them, not to rush them or push them. Yeah, yeah, I love what you say, kind of 
help us to tolerate that ambivalence, expand our mm -hmm. own window of tolerance so that we can stay there and support them and not push them. So yeah. if we're in this predicament, you mm -hmm. know, and the couple lets us know, how would we as the therapist go about letting them know what our next step is? How would we make the process explicit around mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is how we're going to put this into the cycle. Like, what what would you suggest that therapists maybe possibly say to their clients? Well, I think that if you start with, oh, that's identifying where you are and what kind of cycle you got stuck with. I think the partner, if you have one partner who lean toward or lean toward more to the uh, ending relationship, they may not be interested. Right. So sometimes I will make it really open and honest to them is that, you know, of course, if everything goes as we have, you know, hope when you first got together is that we want the relationship to last. But there is a reason for you to be where you are. Right. And then we don't know, you know, we don't know um, what would be the outcome. But one thing we can know is that, you know, whatever decision you made, it will be thought through, that you are less likely to regret, you are able to feel like you are part of this decision, rather than just being, you know, asked, you know, or forced to stay or leave, right? And then when we made a decision, you will be able to make decision together and see your part in this, and also plan for the future together. So whatever happened, whatever decision you made, that part is the same, right? That we are going to reduce the pain, mm -hmm. you are going to think it through and make a decision that you feel you have some say in it and that you know, is under your control and also plan for the life that you don't have to feel you fail miserably and you may learn something from this relationship either way and you are able to be happier in the future. So that is sometimes I present the whole process of therapy and those who are very general term that either they stay together will, will, um, will, be, you know, will make sense or they decide to end the relationship, it will also make sense. Yeah, I really love that. And you, know, you said something earlier too in this place where you know, if you're going to put this into the cycle and do some stage one work around the ambivalence where you have one partner who may be reluctant to mm -hmm. be vulnerable about their desire to leave or what's going on because they don't want to give their partner false hope. Like if I start mm -hmm. being to them, <laughs> they're going to think, okay, yeah, I definitely want to stay. And maybe I hear this quite a bit, even in couples that want to stay in the marriage, but they say, I'm just afraid it's going to slide backwards and go back to the way that it always was, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. so that become really hard for them but I love how you're saying you know we can help them whichever way they choose and again it's their choice if they choose to save it things are going to make sense and we're going to help them minimize the pain but if they're going to choose to leave we're going to help it make sense help them both be a part of the decision and help minimize the pain which is so important and I think even for couples that decide to leave if they can have a sense of clarity around how they got to this place and mm -hmm. both parts, it really helps them have more closure. And, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that's probably just that clarity, I think is so helpful for couples. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes one person won't truly understand how their partner got to that place or why things ended or, you so know. So that's why, you know, it doesn't really matter if they want to repair or they want to think about ending a relationship or they just don't know. It still makes a lot of sense to go through stage one to de-escalate the cycle. Because if they are still uh, caught up in the cycle, they create more harm and damage to themselves, to each other, and to their relationship. Then the relationship will never be safe enough for them to open up and really share their experience, right? What they have been experiencing in this relationship, right? So I think, you know, for example, we talk about someone may uh, act really distant and cold, so then they don't sort of give the other partner the false hope. You know, vice versa, 
the other partner who really wants to save this relationship may say something like, oh, I don't want you anymore. This is such a bad relationship. I can't wait to leave. Or they will say something really, really hurtful. But sometimes they use this to poke. They use this to force the other person to change. They use this as a threat. Or yeah. even they use this as a way to tell themselves that the pain could end. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's for self comfort too. So without getting into the cycle, really, we really don't understand what they are doing and what they are going through right now, and we cannot stop them from causing more harm. Then there will never be a safe place for them to have meaningful conversation. So going mm -hmm. through stage one, regardless of their goal, is still very important. It set up the platform, right? This is what we call a secure base right, a, a safe environment to, for them to really deal with the difficulty they are facing. Yeah, I love, so I love how you said that during stage one, you know, really organizing, understanding what it is that they're doing. I love how you said, we may not know, we can see what they're doing, but we may not understand the meaning. And yeah, definitely, I've heard clients use that oh, I really hate you. I just can't wait to leave. Really, they're trying to get their partner to say, mm -hmm. actually, I really love you. And that hurts. You know, it's a sign mm -hmm. of saying, oh, you still mm -hmm. care for me. You know, it's kind mm -hmm. of like their own version of reverse psychology, you know, right. so understanding the moves in their dance mm -hmm. that keep them from having these meaningful conversations. I love how you said that. Now, yeah. will, we, will we be able to do any stage two work? Because I've kind of gotten a sense from Mm -hmm. Other before that, if a couple is ambivalent, that you won't do stage two because there's not enough safety. Um, so let's talk about that. <laughs> well, I think, well, for me, you can definitely do stage two, but the goal will be different, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think the, the mm -hmm. overarching theme in EFT stage two is to so that recreate some connections through sharing vulnerability, right? For a couple who want to reconcile and reconnect, sharing vulnerability is to for them is for them to have more emotional connection, for them to feel closer with each other, and can use the other person as a secure base. But for a couple who are breaking up, to have a stage two stage two conversation serve the same purpose that they can still create some connection, not necessary to feel intimate or to be able to depend on each other, but to be able to have mutual respect, to appreciate the life they have shared together, to take responsibility of their input in a situation. So then they are able to co-parent or make other decisions together. Yeah. Right. I think that step five will be really handy in this because you get them to own, you know, not in a reactive way, but in that real deep primary way. This is where I'm at, where I've been at, and in a way that, you know, it's those meaningful conversations they haven't been able to get to before, and they're owning that mm -hmm. part of self that says, I'm really broken here. That's right. So there are four things that I think is really important for for the therapist to facilitate and for the couple to share when they go through the stage two, right? So there are four things that I, I think that, you know, I would recommend to uh, help couple have this kind of dialogue. One is to grieve, you know, they, to help them grieve um, the end of this relationship and see this as a loss, you know, a disappointment, a broken dream even. And then this may be an injurious, experience for them. So then they can access and share the sadness, the hurt, some guilt, maybe some regret, right? And a lot of pain. So then they can share that together. So that then you don't have to feel like you're experiencing this alone. Because I have a client who tell me, she said, you know, I'm so glad that we can have this conversation because he's the only one who actually, who really know what I have been going through because he is in a relationship with me. She mm -hmm. said, my friend may be really supportive, but they really don't know to this level. So it's really meaningful for them to share that common experience, to grieve 
the loss and then sort of like a failure right maybe this is not a failure of your life but when the relationship ends, it's really hard for people not to feel any sense of failure right yeah yeah and the second thing i would i think is important for them to talk about is to own up to the responsibility in the situation which is not necessarily to talk about they should be responsible for any mistakes right but it's more about the role they play in the cycle the cycle they have caught up with the cycle that pushed them further away the cycle that sort of made them become more distant and less intimate mm -hmm. you know for example for withdrawer they may be doing a lot of things without communicating right they may be thinking a lot but then you can see that right and then when they see there's a problem in the relationship they choose to stay silent they choose yeah. to become more distant rather than fighting for it. Mm -hmm. Versus for pursuer, they may be fighting for it, but they have difficulty sharing vulnerability. And they, the way they fight for the relationship may cause more harm. Yeah. Right? So those are the responsibility that we want to help them to own up to. This is so important in this healing process from the breakup because you know, breaking up is hard enough to feel like it's all your fault and to feel like your partner see this as all your fault is even more traumatizing. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. So for them both to take their part of responsibility is really um, important for the healing process. And it is also the foundation for forgiveness. Forgive yeah. yourself and forgive the other person. Yeah, I think that's great. Also gives them something tangible that they can walk away from and, and work on themselves is this is, you know, where I could have done better as a relationship partner. I'm owning that. And I know now we can work through it and I can have peace, even if we don't stay in this relationship where I can do it better if I choose to go on and get married again or have another relationship. Eventually. Well, that that's actually the, the the next part that I will we will need to help them to talk about is to really appreciate themselves and the other partner, right? Because nobody really start this relationship thinking that you will fail. You know, when we got married, we are hoping that we will be together and forever, and we will grow old together. So you know, we all have some input, and we all make contribution and do things for the other person. So can we appreciate not just the other person? but also our self, you know, our effort, the, the contribution we made, and also the good memory we share. Because that's, that's right. a very important part of the relationship. So you don't feel like I'm such a fool from the first day, right? Yeah. Feel like all the time and the energy that you spend are all wasted. That's another horrible feeling that we want to help them deal with. I also have a few clients that have wanted to get out of their relationships, but feel kind of this internal struggle because they realize there were some really beautiful moments mm -hmm. that were very impactful and they're like, mm -hmm. not quite sure what to do with those feelings. And so having that discussion where it's okay to honor and treasure the good moments right. that you've had together that, you know, the two can exist at the same time, even if you chose to leave, doesn't mean that you That's didn't right. have good parts of the relationship. Yeah. And then also that kind of regret was set up for the last part of the conversation I would suggest as stage two is really to, talk, to integrate this experience into your working model of self and others. And what did you learn and grow from this experience? So then, like you said, they can take risk you know, yeah. into a different, a new chapter of their life. Maybe they want to stay alone for a while. Maybe they want to get involved with someone else. Maybe they just develop a different kind of relationship with themselves, right? So then this, this conversation will help them really to integrate this experience, not just as a loss or a failure, but also right. as a growth, right? A self-growth, a learning experience. So then they don't have to be traumatized for life. Right? They right. can actually get up and then, you know, sort of really heal and then move on with their life in a different way. Yes. They can have peace within themselves, regardless of, you know, which way the marriage went. And I think that's so important. Having been divorced once myself, mm. guys, I was married once before mm. and um, 
And, you know, having that peace, I, I just think it's so important to sort through the baggage because if you don't, you're likely to carry it on to future relationships. And I see, mm -hmm. I've seen friends do this. I've seen neighbors, colleagues, whatever, you know, when you don't deal with the emotions, then, you know, a lot of them start moving on before they're ready. They haven't sorted through the baggage. They haven't come to peace about mm -hmm. how they feel. They're really angry, they're really bitter, and they keep making jabs at their partner, even while they're trying to move on. And, you know, their new partner is like, why do you keep talking about your ex all the time, <laughs> you know? So it doesn't make like a clean, healthy break, and they then don't go on to choose healthy future partners necessarily or see the health in another relationship because they're still wounded. I know. And then we also have a lot of clients who will get involved with the new relationship too quickly, right? Before they even had a chance to process that. And then yeah. sometimes they use, what, what does that call? They use this uh, as a buffer or as a way to bounce back, you know, using yeah. the new relationship, which is really not a healthy way to start a relationship. That's right. That's right. 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 Even if they don't move on, it's like, then they use this as jabs, mm -hmm. you know, to their kids in front of their kids. They're, you know, angry and making zingers at the other spouse. And that really impacts the kids and the kids, mm -hmm. you know, if, especially if there's kids involved, even if you aren't still married, you're still going to be in each other's lives as long as you have the children. So, you know, it's really yeah. beneficial for them that there's peace between yeah. the two of you guys. And that's actually an excellent point because sometimes client will say, well, if we have decided to, to end the relationship, why even go through the trouble? you know, with therapy and have this hard, kind of heart to heart conversation, they don't want to do that because it feels too painful and they don't see the purpose. And I think that one thing I, I find it very helpful to encourage them to go through this process is to talk about co-parenting. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, most couple, when they end a relationship, they share something, right? Either a business together and most likely they have children together. Right. And, you know, we heard people have horrible relationship with their ex spouse, right? They talk about that. It's like they were this nightmare. They make everything difficult. But think about how many decisions you need to make with yeah. the, parent, the other parent of your children, you know, about holiday, about the visitation time, about which college to go to. I mean, there are so many decisions you need to make together for the sake of your children. If you do not have mutual respect, if you have unresolved resentment or anger or even hatred, how did you talk to someone in a civil, respectful, and productive way for the best interest of your children? Yeah. Right. And then this is something not, oh, I can just suppress that or I can put it aside because you, whenever you need to have this discussion, it becomes another trigger. Mm -hmm. Right? And then we all know that if there are unresolved issues, it doesn't go away just because the time goes by. Right. So that time heals all wounds. Some people say um, time absence makes the heart grow fonder, but I once heard a friend say, or absence makes the heart go yonder. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, well, but I mean, I think, it you know, they will they'll you know i always tell my clients if you don't deal with the pain it will deal with you <laughs> and usually it yeah. comes up ways that you I don't know. i know sooner or later right sometimes sometimes that you will come back or sometimes it you know this is also very interesting probably because i'm also getting older and i have uh, clients who are closer to my age and then they start to talk about you know but this strategy used to work i have been doing this for my whole life you know, I have not want to talk to my ex-wife or ex-husband for 10 years. Why do I need to learn now? Because put, putting off the problem or not addressing some issues does not resolve the issue. That's right. Right. right? So this is sometimes I use to encourage my client is that, you know, I don't expect or I don't need you to fall back in love with each other. Right. But you need to be able to be civil, to be respectful and not to be triggered or so reactive towards each other. That's yeah. the basic of co-parenting after divorce. I love that word trigger. That is so key because I've often had spouses say, you know, they, maybe they had to go to like parent teacher night and their ex-spouse was mm -hmm. there and mm -hmm. they just get so triggered whenever they're in the presence of their spouse. 
mm-hmm. and the second spouse and it just it the way that they react and cope to it doesn't mm-hmm. really help the kids and mm-hmm. it's it's hard it's so painful so that's so important to be able to talk about these things and help them come to that place of peace on the inside. That's right. And one thing sometimes, you know, I feel like when we talk about uh, ending a relationship, not only there's a lot of ambivalence, there's also a lot of fear or anxiety because yeah. the unknown future, right? Yeah. We will hear people talking about how do I know this is a good decision? How can I be sure that I won't regret, right? How do I know that um, we won't hurt our children? or I will be happier in new relationship, or can I even find someone in the future, right? We hear a lot of ambivalence and fear. Mm-hmm. And to help them to normalize it, to validate that fear, you know, just to be there with them. And then if we, we can find anything to empower them, to promote self-care, yeah. that's also very important, you know, in the healing process, it doesn't matter if, you know, they stay or leave the relationship. Yeah. So, so I love how you said, you know, we can really use EFT to do this as couples. And if they're willing to come as a couple, that's fantastic. And, and EFT mm-hmm. can still work for this. But what mm-hmm. if only one person is willing to come to therapy? What would our EFIT uh, sessions look like if we're using EFT to help them cope with this? Well, again, we still start with the help them assess their emotions, right? They're ha- they, they also have a lot of pain, loss, anger, and sadness, and maybe regret, or even shame, right? Mm-hmm. And I think to validate, to empathize, to normalize their experience, and then be there with them. And then I think that's so important because, I mean, how many times we heard clients say, I just need someone to really hear me or yes. to understand me? Yeah, yeah, and- divorce so lonely you know and mm-hmm. when you have things like the holidays and you see all mm-hmm. these like, images and commercials and ads for family time and stuff it's just mm-hmm. like rubbing salt in the wounds and they just feel like nobody gets me I know and also I think one thing I always have to remind myself is that I am their therapist I'm not their friend so the purpose is not to blame the other partner or to make the other partner the bad guy because the more you make the other partner the bad guy the more you make your client feel victimized and powerless i mean i think that's the trade-off rupture in the relationship when we want to help them find a path to being civil Mm -hmm. and you know somewhat amicable with their ex-spouse and the one thing i often tell my client is that you know, even though, you know, this relationship has ended, even though you don't feel loved by this person anymore, right? But the sad thing, you know, there are two, two directions I will go. One is that this is really sad that you, you also change your view of yourself, right? Now you're looking, you're looking at yourself through someone's eye when this person doesn't appreciate you and they have stopped loving you. Yeah. Right, so that's one sad thing that I, I'm trying to help them to sort of externalizing and differentiate the view or the point, the, the perspective that they receive from the other person, mostly negative, versus how can they develop a new view of self through our eyes. Yeah, yeah. I think it's so important. You said something that I really want to um, you know, highlight. Um, you talked about, you know, again, our role is their therapist, not their friend. And I remember, you know, one of the ways that I distinguish when a person is coming to individual therapy about their relationship is I help them focus on them, right? Just like when we're doing the tango with couples and we're working with one partner, you know, we don't, we don't stop going in until we get them talking about themselves. And that's what we want. I think with eFit is don't just make it be a, a bashing session for the ex-spouse where all they do is vent and talk trash about their ex-partner. Get them talking about themselves and process themselves and where they've been in the relationship and where they are now and that view of mm-hmm. self I love that's so important because mm-hmm. sometimes they have left the relationship with a fractured view of self and we want to help them rise strong mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. 
So, so let me give you two examples because I think that sometimes people get uh, get stuck. Is that if your clients so sort of trash and badmouth their spouse and blame their spouse on everything, is that you know he's such a liar and then he never tell any truths and I'm so stupid. You know, I trust his words or sometimes it, it, I just don't feel right, but I didn't follow it through. Or I didn't investigate. I was so stupid. So you will hear this. You know, there's two sides of the coin, right? You know, the other, but blame the other partner, but also feel stupid themselves, right? So this is a time that I will go in and use some of the empathy and, re, you know, empathic reflection or conjecture. I would just say, you know, I, I understand now when you look back, you know, hindsight is always 20, 20. But at that moment, I think that to keep this relationship is what most, what's most important to you. And in order to do that, you turn your head away, mm -hmm. right? You keep your mouth shut. You tell yourself, don't go there. Because if I go there and I open the can of warm, this relationship may not be able to last. Mm -hmm. So this is not about being stupid, right? This is about that I'm going to do whatever it takes, even though I have to put my pain away, but I will do that to save my relationship. Yeah, that's really good. <sighs> so that's one way to help them. It's like, I don't sugarcoat it, right? This is, yes, you did that. But when I present it this way, is that I present what they did with a lot of understanding and empathy and hoping there's a lot, not very judgmental or not very blaming, mm -hmm. right? So it's really what they're doing. But then also I think that, you know, when when we want to empower them, I think that that's the other thing is that, that we want to sort of find something that now you're angry is very important because when you're angry, you're actually telling yourself that I will not let this happen again, mm -hmm. right? I will learn to trust myself. I will learn that whatever gut feeling I have, there must be a reason. Right? Because you want to, like, we go into the longing and desire that I want to have a different future. I want to be happier or I deserve better. You know, and we want to, I think the beauty of EFT is that we don't want them just to be the cheerleader for themselves. Or we don't want them just to talk about, talk about what they should do. Right? We right. want them to really feel the warmth from inside. That we want them to really feel like you're right. They have that realization and access to their feelings and need that they truly feel like I can do it. Yeah. Not yeah. because they can tell me to. Yeah. It sounds like what you're saying too is that, you know, kind of like George Fowler has this little funny acronym, COCO. You know, we're going to come alongside them and help them co-regulate those painful emotions and help co-create meaning. So that, you know, through empathy and helping them to make meaning where they don't walk away with that negative view of self or this, you know, and I, I love how you're, you're talking about that. I think that's so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's, you know, I think that's one thing is that with couples, we want to help them share what their true feeling and experience and then help them to accept the decision and then to forgive themselves and each other. So then they can have some connection based on co-parenting or based on friendship or even based on, you know, the, what's it, the sentimental experience that we share some, some time in our life together. I think that's how you sort of find closure, you know, with this, the end of this relationship. Versus in EFT individual therapy, we want to help them sort of grieve, and assess the experience they have in this relationship, right? And then to be able to find the, the strength inside mm -hmm. and have a different relationship with themselves so that we can promote, promote, promote self-respect, self-worth, and self-care. So the yeah. goal is a little bit different, but both are very helpful to heal from you know, this breakup. Those are so beautiful. So beautiful. Oh, this is so good. Now you teach a workshop on this, right? Yes. Yes. I teach, I mean, there are different curriculum that if we want to 
cover both EFT couple and individual. I do three day workshop on this topic about the breaking up conversation, a healthy breakup conversation. And then if we focus only on couple, I have curriculum that is a two day workshop. So I have done this and people find it very, very helpful because this is something that most people don't, cannot imagine or had a hard time imagining using EFT with. Yes. Yes, and you painted a lovely picture of how we can do that. And I think it would be great to have folks have you to their area and schedule, you know, the two day or the three day. I think this would be so helpful because this isn't something that we actively talk about in our field. Certainly not something that they teach throughout any models of counseling per se, you know, and I love how we can integrate that with EFT and help couples really have some dignity as they, if they mm -hmm. choose to walk away from a relationship and help mm -hmm. them walk away healthy and healed and so that they can go on with their life and have That's good right. relationships That's with their right. family, themselves, their ex and future partners. This That's is right. so they don't, have, they don't have to walk around with baggages or even with an open wound. Yes, yes, <laughs> the walking wounded, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so people can contact me through the Philadelphia for Philadelphia Center for EFT.org website. .org, that's very important. And I'm going to make sure that I put this link mm -hmm. in the description for the video on YouTube. Now, we are a podcast now, but I haven't figured oh. out the way to uh, <laughs> put the descriptions in the description for the podcast, but it will be on YouTube. So, Philadelphia Center for EFT.org. And then yeah. do you have a personal website? Um, I do, but uh, I think the Philadelphia Center for EFT.org is easier and it has the same access to me. Um, I also do training in Asia, so I use Mandarin. So that's an interesting thing to think, you know, for me is that to talk about breakup in different culture is also, yeah. you, know, you know, very, very helpful, I think. Yes, because there's a lot of cultural norms and beliefs mm -hmm. and values around breakup. So that's a very interesting piece. Remember, it's it's important for us to be multiculturally competent as therapists. Yeah. Too. So glad, glad that EFT can span, you know, all cultures because attachment is a universal, you know, human survival instinct. So yeah. that's beautiful. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to make sure we put the description for uh, Philadelphia Center for EFT on the um, description for this video. We're going to make sure that folks have all the information they need and they can contact you and schedule you to come out to their area. She offers a two day or a three day, depending on if you want just couples or couples and individual. I say go for the three day because you want to get as much training as you can get. <laughs> yes, yes. So thank, thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome. Thank you so much for coming back on our show. And guys, if you haven't missed it, a lot of rave reviews for our previous episode about using EFT with silence and micro expressions in session. And it was a fabulous episode. So you can, and we've done an episode on EFT for depression with Dr. Ting Lu. So make sure that you catch both of those episodes. And thank you again to our viewers for helping us be successful. And make sure that you hit subscribe because more videos are on the way.